Hey there, it's Carrie at Studio R12 Stencils and spooky season is upon us. And today we are going to show you how to paint a quick and easy bag for trick or treat. Today's project is going to be quick and easy. We are using a paper bag that you can get from the dollar store or any craft store, and we are using two stencils. One of them is a Halloween frame stencil. We have a playlist we are working on with several tutorials and videos on how to use these frames. And then we're also using a trick or treat stencil. So let's get started. Painting on a bag is going to be a little different than painting on a wood surface. You don't have as much wiggle room when it comes to mistakes. So you're really going to want to focus, take your time, but it's still going to be a quick and easy project. So first things first that's going to be different is when you tape down your stencil on your bag, if you just take off the tape, put it right on, you are going to rip off some of the bag and pull it up when you take the tape off. So we always use the tape on your shirt or on your apron or on your jeans, just to get off some of that sticky before you put it on there. Come here, and then it's still going to keep your stencil down, but it's gonna take off some of that stick that would prevent a mess later. We have our stencil taped down in two places to prevent any wiggle room from our bag. And now we have our paint poured out on our palette. I'm gonna tell you our colors as we go through them so you can check your Studio R12 paint color guide and see the colors that we're using and potentially do a similar product project yourself. I am going to start in the bottom right corner. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to go from right to left on this project. I did put my stencil over a little bit. My stencil is bigger than my bag. So I decided to keep everything on the left side on my bag and then let the right side fall over. Since we're gonna start on the right side, I'm going to actually start with mixing a couple of colors for my cornstalk. So we're going to do a mix of 52 and 31. I already have them out here on the palette. I'm going to get my yellow over here, my 32, and then I'm just gonna pull a little bit of the 31 into it. So you always will pull your dark color into your light color. Then add a little bit more yellow as we go. I didn't have a color in our selection of colors that I loved for this. So I decided I would just make my own. We're using this offset Italian palette knife. Just a really easy way to mix the paint. And if you're looking at my palette, you'll notice there is not a lot of paint on my palette today. Everything we are doing is tiny, and so we don't have to use a lot of paint. I actually probably have a lot more paint than I need for most colors. So with the palette knife, when you are done using it and mixing, you will go ahead and just wipe it right off, and then you can put it right back in your bucket for use next time. Refold my paper towel. This project is going to be a really good project to use your small brushes. If you've bought a set of brushes, the ones that we typically used are the largest size because they cover more ground quicker. However, since we are working in small spaces on a small project today, I'm going to use some of our smaller brushes. This is the quarter inch of our dome brush. We love a dome brush. The shape of the dome helps to prevent the bleeding under. I will share a beginner's video, a basics video to help you if you are having bleeding under on your projects. This project is definitely a project that you don't want to have bleeding under on because you don't have as much room for fixing mistakes. We offer several ways that you can fix your mistakes. I'll share that video as well, but this is not one of them. So we're going to get our paint on our brush and then come over to our paper towel and do even a little more of the offloading than what we typically do. And since our bag has the handles, it has the fold on the back, it does sit a little funky. It's not completely flat. So as we are stenciling, we are going to want to hold down on the stencil just to give it a little more stability. And on this project, I am doing a stipple or a tapping to add my paint to my project rather than a swirl. I've done several projects with Christmas cards and wrapping paper 
And I've just found that as we do painting on paper, the stipple technique seems to work the best to get your coverage on your project. So the theme for today's bag is going to be trick or treat. This is something that you can make rather than to go buy a little treat bag. You can use the stencils that you have go ahead and paint on some bats or whatever the theme is for the Halloween costume this year. You could even have your kiddo write their name on the bag after you have stenciled it or let them stencil it themselves, have a nice little fun project to do together. And then it's a personalized and fun Halloween activity. So I'm going to get into our multi-masker. This is an amazing tool just made out of Mylar with a bunch of different shapes that we designed to help not have to tape off and mask our product projects. So I'm coming close to this pumpkin. So I'm just gonna put my masker over top of the pumpkin and then finish this stock right here without getting any ghosting, which is if I would get my yellow into my pumpkin. So we have our first layer on our stock and I don't always paint multiple layers on a bag. It really just depends on how you want it to look. This one, I think I'm gonna go back over it just a little to make it more even. So if you see any spots that aren't as even, painting on a bag is also gonna be different than painting on wood. You might have to go back through and even out some of your paint. All right. Peel it back and see, and there we have our stocks. Look how good they look. We are going to throw this into our water bucket till we can get it cleaned off. We'll have a video on how to properly clean your brushes so that you can do that quickly and easily for future use. So I'm gonna go into my pumpkins. I have my orange as 56, and then I have my green as 41 for the stem. So with the stem, I think actually I'm not going to do green for the stems. I think I'm going to do brown for the stems, which would make more sense. So we're going to do the 31 for the stems because that's what I already have out. I'm going to get into my brown here just a little bit. And I'm going to grab my multi-masker and bring it over here and find a spot that fits. And I'm going to stencil down. And this, I'm just gonna do one layer here, nice and quick, to get my stems done. Okay, pull my multi-masker away, throw this in the bucket. So this project is a project that you might want to have multiple brushes for. We could have potentially used our yellow brush for the brown and just added more brown and mixed off on the side. We could also have used the yellow brush for the orange and mix those in as well so that they'll kind of stay in the same color family. But since I have a bunch of extra brushes here, I'm just going to go along with my new brushes. And we're just gonna go here. We wiped off again, offloaded our brush. The offloading is a real, just the most important part of this project. The more paint that you have on your brush, the bigger of a chance that you're gonna to have to bleed under. And without having ways to fix the bleeding under on the paper, it's just really better safe than sorry here. Then we have the option here to do some different things with colors. We could do all of our pumpkin orange. We could do the mouth and the eyes black. So it's more like a jack-o'-lantern. You could also just do this whole project in black, make it a black and white bag. I think I'm just gonna stick with the orange here. Now, since we do have a larger area here, I'm just gonna hold down the stencil. And then when you do have a larger area and you are painting on paper products, either a card or a bag or even wrapping paper, those center spots that are large and open do tend to get really wet. So it might seem at first that they are warping, but once they dry, they should go back to normal. You can always dry them with a blow dryer or just leave it out and set. We noticed on some of the cards that we did that we put so much paint on them that you would, you 
wanted to lay down a book or something over top of it just so that it could flatten out and, and dry properly. Okay, so now we're going to go into our black. So I did pour a little bit more black on here because we have all the bats here. I'm gonna start at the top and work my way over and then come into the bottom. And I am using a little bit bigger of a brush for this just because I ran out of my teeny tiny ones. I underestimated how many brushes I was gonna need for this project. So right now I am stenciling over top of the handle of the bag. So it's really important on this part, this part to go ahead and hold down the stencil on the bag so that we prevent it from moving and prevent mistakes. So I'm getting really close to this moon here. Probably should have grabbed a multi-masker so that we don't bleed under because this is going to be yellow and if we would get black here, it would be really hard to cover the black with the yellow. Coming down here and with the bigger brush that we're using, the bigger the brush, the more area you're going to cover. So that's where the multi-masker really comes into play with ghosting on other parts of your project. So I didn't offload my brush very much on this bat. Interested to see and show you the difference of not offloading well and what it could potentially do to your project. With the stippling, you'll notice how much paint is up on this brush. When you swirl, you're doing a really light motion and it's almost like you're barely even touching your project. However, when you're stippling, you are hitting the brush onto the project so that paint is going to go up further into the brush and is also going to keep more brush or more paint on your brush. So that stippling also increases your chances of bleeding under. Okay, and then we just have one more. We're gonna go into the moon and the moon is going to be number 33. The black that we just did is number 28. And we'll have all of the colors for this project listed below in the description, as well as products with each of the stencils that we're using, as well as some of our other tools like our multi-masker. Okay, this portion of our project is done. Let's peel off the stencil and Voila, now we have a cute little background for our bag. You can see that there is a little bit of bleeding on the bat. Remember, I didn't wipe it off as well. So that is something that you'll wanna take into consideration. On the orange, we did a really good job that you don't have as much bleeding and it's a little more crisp. So next we're going to, this would be a cute time to let your kid get a marker, write their name, or doodle on it as well. You could even use some glitter on top of the bats. We have several videos on how to glitter through stencils. That would be super cute as well. However, I am going to use a trick-or-treat stencil. But with my trick-or-treat stencil, it is way too big for my project. So I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and I'm just going to cut the stencil. Yes, you can cut your stencils to make them fit your projects, just make sure that you keep them together or even um, write on them. So all of our stencils have a little bit of an etching. So this is stencil STCL1291 underscore two. So then what you could do with that is grab a marker. On this stencil, you could write just STCL1291 underscore two, write it on all three of them and then you could clip them together or put them in a baggie so that you know that they go together. So now we have three different stencils that we are going to use as one to help take up space inside of our frame. So then now you can mix and match, you can move it wherever you'd like it to, just to take up that space. I'm just winging it and I think I like that there. You could also use a T-square to measure your project and see exactly where the center of the project is. You can line it up, you could stagger them. It's really dependent on how 
particular you want to be. So we have quite a bit of black. I was originally going to do black for this, but I think that I'm going to branch out a little bit and use one of our other favorite Halloween colors. This is number one, and this is our purple. I'm gonna add a little purple to our project. So this is not a color that we use a lot. You can see here in the honey bottle, there's a blue line on this bottle. If you have a paint that you don't use often, you will want to make sure that you shake it up really well before putting it on your palette. Otherwise, some of those colors that separate might become really watery on top and you might have a mix of blue and purple swirl. So I'm going to take my tape off of my previous stencil because we had already made that not as sticky. I'm going to try to avoid putting it over top of where I have already stenciled. I'm gonna grab me a brush. With this one, since the stencil is a little bigger, we have a bit more that we're painting. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a normal size brush. This is our 5 8 This is the one that we use most often. I'm still going to offload my paint and then come over here and start stippling. Okay, we have one layer done. I think I'm just gonna leave this at one layer. We are going to pull it off and have our cute little trick. I'm so glad that I did the purple with that. I absolutely love that. And then now we're going to add our ore. Let's see, that's about center. I'm just using, eyeballing it and matching it up with the trick. Okay, and then take this down. Now, one thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind, if you cut your stencils, you are going to be, and I did tape over here on the purple, so we'll have to see when I take this tape off if it pulls up some of our paint. But you will want to be careful if you are cutting your stencils that you are putting down tape or using your multi-masker around the edge because now my O and my R are really close to the edge of that stencil. And you can see here that I painted over some of my tape. So if I wouldn't have had my tape there, I would have ghosted off of my stencil and onto my project. So now we'll peel up the tape for this. There we go. There was not a problem with it on the K. It didn't stick very much, so that is a good sign, but a reminder to be careful as we are painting. So this one, there's a fold. Uh, there's a fold in the bag here where the back of it is. So you could pull it down some, and it's also something to think about when you are starting your, adding your words and using projects like this that aren't a regular wood surface, that going with the little inconsistencies of the paper or the bag or whatever it might be, that you might want to line up your things before you start painting so that you can get away from any potential hazards that you might run into. All right, brush is going in the water. We're gonna pull off our stencil. There are a couple hairs on our project. If your hair comes out of your brush, which can happen after use, once the paint dries, you can peel the little bristles right off. And there we go, we have a trick or treat bag. You could leave it like this. You could add some more bats or different items around your border. Have fun, trick or treat, and be safe.